It's about lunchtime. A little bit after lunchtime, so I'm gonna go try to find something to eat. See if we can go find Davy Crockett. Have a talk with Davy Crockett. We ain't got a taco fry bread. Mmm, doesn't that look good? So I'm gonna find a good comfortable spot out of the rain to go eat it. We're up here on one corner of the fort. One of the defensive corners. Got the American flag right there. America. Let's go check out the camp. We just spotted Davy Crockett. Let's go have a talk with him. Howdy, howdy. I'm sorry? I'm Davy Crockett. Well, good to meet you, Mr. Crockett. Yes, sir. You like my hat? Man, that is sharp. I had got cool the other night. That was old Buck Coon, this tree over yonder. I showed him a famous Crockett grin. He jumped out of his fur and landed on my head. <laughs> I kept his nose like so smell better. Check them down here to fight the Creek Indians after they commenced that buddy butchery last year. Four mems killed all them folks. I'm living about 10 miles below Winchester on Beans Creek up there in Tennessee. When I first heard about the mystery that was done at the fort, I felt none of the dreaded die, and I thought I was going to feel. So I told my wife, Polly, I was going to join up with the Army. She started crying a bit and said we ain't got no relations living nearby. But I told her my countrymen had been murdered, and I'd go to war just as good as any man alive. Truth was, sir, my dandy was up, and nothing but war was going to set it right. So I joined up with General Jackson and Tennessee volunteers. And he employs me as a scout and a spy and hunt for meat for the cook fires at night and, and uh, spy on the Indians. My first tussle we got into with them red sticks was about this time last year, November of 1813. We formed a hollow square around a village called Toulouse Hatchets. And uh, at the crack of dawn, we moved in on them. Pretty soon, them Indians found it was our property. We shot them down like dogs, so there weren't no sport to it. About 46 of those Indians run into a log cabin a little bit bigger than that one right there. Some of them wanted to surrender to us, but there was an old Indian woman come out of the front porch of that cabin, sat down and knocked up a bow and arrow with a foot, shot a man. First time we've ever seen a man shot with a bow and arrow. It was a pretty sight. And many soldiers standing around watching that woman notch up that bow and arrow made rifle balls and blew through her and killed her. And they moved in and began to shoot the Indians in the cabin, and the flash of the guns set the cabin on fire. We could hear the engines in there screaming for their guys and burning up. Well, the next morning we went back to that village to see if there's something we missed taking the day before. And underneath that burnt up cabin, we found us a fine chance of taters in a root cellar. And no hunger compelled us to eat them. I'd rather say we didn't, but we ate them taters too many the burst. Them taters looked like they'd been stewed in scrap meat. The grease on them Indians had burnt up the day before and cooked them taters. And, sir, you pass me the taters today, I'm just going to pass them right back to you. I may never eat another tater as long as I live. That's a true story. Crockett included that in his autobiography because he had been the only congressman that voted against removing the Indians from Alabama. Subsequently, his general, Andrew Jackson, whom they were friends with in this time period, is now president of the United States. And they became political enemies. And Jackson worked to keep Crockett out of Congress one more time. Crockett told his constituents, you vote for the man with the temper toes to see me, you can all go to hell, I'm going to Texas. And the rest is history. That was right before the Alamo, wasn't it? Yeah. Went, went and that's kind of the reason he went in the first place is, is because basically they started well trash talking him and, and seems like he lost his wife about that time. And well, he lost his wife, first wife, right after this, the Creek Indian War in 1814. She died of malaria. She suffered it from it as a child. And uh, so he married a, a widow woman who lost her husband in this war of 1812. And his autobiography, he said, she had two small children, I had three. I figured I could be a paw for hers and she could be a maw for mine. So I courted her like a fox in a hen house. And pretty soon we became, entered into her talk and became man and wife. Came into Alabama in 1816 looking over some land he had seen when he was here in the Creek War. And he caught malaria and almost died. It hadn't been for a hunting party of Choctaw, he would have probably died on the trail. 
his friends he was with went back up to Tennessee and informed Elizabeth that he had passed away. And so she was in mourning. And when he finally got back up to Tennessee, he found out he died. He said, I know that was one wallop of a lie when I first heard it. Exact words. That guy right there is amazing. I've tried to get him to break character in the past and he just won't do it. He went ahead and broke character long enough to talk to me because he knew I was going to upload this to uh, YouTube. So that was cool. But normally, especially if there's a crowd of people around, he will not break character. He is Davy Crockett. Pretty neat.